So where do we start? Jalen Carter was spotted on the sideline in tears as the Eagles offense goes from pretty good to pretty bad. The defense gets scored on six straight times. Debo Samuels with three touchdowns, his best game of the season. We also got to talk about the most ridiculous take I ever heard from Stephen A. Smith. And Adam Schefter said the Eagles still might be in trouble for this incident. And Zach Ertz most likely coming back home too. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Tall Podcast. And today, as always, we got a lot to get into. But before we do that, Eagle Nation, can I ask y'all for a favor? Help your boy out. Smash the like. Subscribe if you are new. And turn on that notification bell so you don't miss the videos. Let's rock. So jumping right into some drama, Jalen Carter posted on IG after the game, I'd rather cry for losing the game than cry that I'm still broke. Y'all need to get y'all life together. He was spotted on the sideline with tears in his eyes. I don't think he's coming at Eagle fans necessarily. A lot of Cowboys and other fans were trolling him on IG and Twitter. So I think he's more responding to that. All I know is I'd rather have my young boys care to show that emotion than to act like it's no big deal. It's all good, Jalen Carter. We gonna bounce back and so will you. Another misfortune on the sidelines with Big Dom versus Greenland. Schefter tweeted, The NFL is reviewing the sideline incident between the 49ers linebacker Dre Greenlaw and Eagles head of security Dom DeSandro. Per the league office, there is expected to be a follow-up with the Eagles this week. Probably some type of fine. Let me know what your thoughts about that whole situation are in the comment section. Now, before we get into the game recap, I do want to say we kind of knew what the Niners were going to do, but they didn't anyways. You got to credit Debo, McCaffrey, and Brock Purdy. They were the better team on Sunday. No if, and, or buts about it. However, we will see them again, and the players are moving on to Dallas. But what gets me upset is Stephen A saying on first take, I'm going to say it because it needs to be said. The kind of beatdown that occurred yesterday or Sunday, one could argue it delegitimized the Eagles as NFC champions. He's saying if they were healthy last year, this is what they would have did to us. That's not how the NFL works. Does that mean we delegitimized the Chiefs Super Bowl because we beat them the second time we played them with different circumstances? No. And in 2009, the Eagles beat the Cardinals in the regular season by 20, then lost to them in the NFC Championship. So we go and see this rematch again. Kudos to the Niners, but let's get into this recap. So the Eagles open in drive facing the third and nine, and they find A.J. Brown for a huge gain. Now third and seven, inside our 10, back shoulder fade to A.J. incomplete, which means the Eagles had to settle for three. Brock Purdy's first drive, third and 12. He's looking, and he finds nobody incomplete. So the Niners go three and out. Things were looking good defensively for the Birds early on. Second possession for the Birds, the Eagles find A.J. Brown on a third and three, and he takes it past the 50. First and 10, Devontae Smith catches a dot from Jalen and he gets the first down. But Jalen falls down 10 yards behind the line, so we're faced with a third and 21. So as you just saw, the Eagles checked it down and kick another field goal. Listen to what BG says about the early red zone struggles. It could have been a different game. It's one of those games where if we took advantage of those moments where we started started fast, go up 14 nothing, different game. You know what I'm saying? Different, different call and all that, but... I just think that, um, you know, we just didn't capture it like we should have. But um, much, like I say, much credit to them because they came out and they, they stayed with it and they made plays and, you know, they ain't look back. I hear you. The momentum would have been different. Things would have been called differently. But at the end of the day, 42 points, six straight touchdowns. Sheesh. So the Niners down six. They're facing the third and one, and they find Debo, who gets yards after the catch and the first down. Next is Kittle with a lot of green grass in front of him. Now the Niners inside the five. They fake it on third and goal and get a touchdown to a Uick. Remember, they reviewed that play. A lot of y'all thought it wasn't a catch, but it was a touchdown. But what happened before that? Josh Sweat was lined up in a neutral zone. So he pretty much said, hey, you guys want to do third down again? Go ahead, by all means. A field goal there changes the complexion of the game. So the Eagles trailing by one, faced with a third and 19, and somehow Devontae Smith gets it. 
but the Eagles eventually get forced to another third down. A lot of time, but he throws it away. Next possession for the Niners, and Brock Purdy finds Kittle for a big first down as the defense got fooled. They're back inside the red zone, and McCaffrey finishes for seven. Now, that touchdown was big because... That was right before the half, and the Niners got the ball to start the third quarter, and they go down and score again. This play right here was huge. It was the first drive in the second half for the Niners, third and five. If the Eagles defense get off the field, who knows what spark it creates for the offense and the defense going forward. But guess who gets absolutely fooled? Eli Ricks, he goes outside when Dewan Jenning goes inside for a big first down. Then another third and two. And McCaffrey totally fooled Morrow. And then they go back to what they love, trickery, and letting Debo be him on the edges. He scores. So the Eagles offense a little desperate. After a penalty, it's first and 20, but he finds Devontae Smith. Third and 11, all-out blitz, and he finds AJ who wills himself to the first down. And then a brotherly shove, which made it a one-score game. And like Fletcher said, we didn't play well, but we had an opportunity to keep it close. We just didn't make the plays. Uh, I think today, uh, as defense, uh, I don't think we did a lot of things right. You know, we didn't tackle, uh, we didn't cover. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, uh, we, we missed a miss, miss, missed a bunch of plays. Uh, they made a bunch of big plays. Uh, we had a chance to keep the game close, and uh, you know, we did. You know, uh, the good thing is, is uh, I've been around this league for a long time, and. The good thing about the regular season is you take a loss, but we get a chance to line up uh, and play another good team next week. You heard him, and we're going to see the drive that kind of blew it all open once again. But I'm glad that Fletch is moving on to Dallas. So is A.J. Brown. He was asked how you get over this loss to face Dallas. How you get over it? Yeah, sure. You have no choice. You know, I'm moving around and, you know, be sad and be mad at yourself about it. But, you know, we got a big opponent coming up next week in Dallas on the road. You gotta, you gotta put your big boy pants on, you know, in life, you know, everything gonna go your way every single time. If you think you're gonna go out there and, and just win in life every single time without, without a blow, it's, it's not gonna happen like that, so, you know. I love that mentality from A.J. Brown, but let's take a pause from the game recap and talk about some news. Now for my ride or die notification gang, we did go live about this subject yesterday around four o'clock. Christian Ellis and Nicholas Morrow if you missed it live, you got to see how bad Morrow was. We're going to talk about that in a little. Call Smudge, bring him in. How he's trying to not let what happened Sunday happen again. Unfortunately, let's get back to the game recap. So the Niners get the ball back and, of course, a huge third and seven, and they get the first down. Next play, he almost gets sacked, but Debo gets the pass, breaks a tackle, and he's off to the races. We're talking about a huge play in the game. Third and eight. Eagles got a counter, and they can't. Needed that first down, but fourth and eight. Eagles punt. Niners get the ball back, and watch. Back-to-back -back third downs. Third and nine, third and five. Eli Ricks gets burned by Dewan Jennings. The nail in our coffin. So like I said, third and nine, all-out blitz. Man-to-man -man coverage, and Ricks gets beat by Jennings. Another third and five, and he goes right at Ricks again. Jennings throws Eli Ricks off and walks into the end zone. So we're down three scores. Our quarterback is in the blue tank getting checked for a concussion. A lot of craziness and a lot more ugly to see. So let me give you something nice to see before we finish it. That cheered you up. Let's get back to it. Hertz gets back in the game, and we do go down the field and score, but a little too late. And so with time running out, the Eagles are inside the 10, and they get a touchdown to Smitty. They go for two, and they don't get it. Second and nine, they're going to find Debo with a big-time screen, and he's all for the races again. I believe this is his third touchdown of the game. Eagles fourth and 12 going for it all. Pass broken up to Smitty, and then they iced it with a knee. Not a fun game to watch, live or the condensed version after. With that being said, let's hear from Bradbury on the back end communication problems. Um, I think they did a good job of you know using motion to their advantage. Um, of course, as, as teams motion back and forth, they do jets and whatnot, uh, especially pre and post snap. Uh, that kind of plays with the communication. Um, and we just got to see everything the same way on the back end. Um, there's a lot of things happening, and uh, we we, just, we didn't see things the same on the back end. I feel like that's what led to some of those uh, busts. It is what it is. 
got to get fixed. Let's look at Brock Purdy's passing yards and who they were against. So he had 314 passing yards and four touchdowns. Now, I do want to say out of 314 passing yards, 215 were yards after the catch, meaning we couldn't tackle and we were out of position. But let's look at it. Morrow allowed a buck 75 and two touchdowns. Both touchdowns were versus Debo. Why is he guarding Debo? Eli Ricks only 44 yards and a touchdown, but three big third downs when we needed to get off the field. Ellis with 33 yards given up. Slay with 32 yards given up. Roby with 15 yards given up. He also got ran over by a reindeer. I mean, Brock Purdy. Reddick in coverage gave up nine. Byer gave up four. Blankenship only two. The touchdown that maybe was a drop. So I don't think it was Bradbury and Slay really getting cooked except for crucial plays. That one third and seven Slay got beat on. But Eli Ricks, big, big third downs. Morrow with almost 200 yards against him. Sheesh, please save us. With all that being said, drop the muscle emoji if you're still rocking because we're still 10-2 and two in first place. Like a lot of the players saying, from here on out, every video is going to be about the Eagles versus Dallas because that's all we should be thinking about. I love hearing from y'all. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And until next time, you know what time it is. We out.